This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Welcome, everybody. Tonight's year, in preparation for the uh, Tishabav, Habal Leinu Lataiva, we have uh, unbelievable information. We begin with the Pasuk in Tehillim and Parak Tzadi, and the Pasuk says like this Vihinoyam Hashem Aleikeno Aleinu. The pleasantness of Hashem our God should be upon us. And our handiwork, the work of our hands, Hashem should affirm. And our handiwork, Hashem should affirm. Okay, we're all familiar with this Pasuk. This is the Pasuk that we say every Matzai Shabbos. This is the Pasuk that inaugurates in the new, uh, the new week. But those who know will remember that this Pasuk was said specifically at a specific juncture in our history. And that is, in Parsha Shmini, on the eighth day of the Hakamas HaMishkan, Aaron HaKoyen comes in and the Pasuk says in Parsha Shmini, Parakir Pasuk Chafbez, Ba Yisa Aaron Es Yadav El Ha'am, Aaron raises his hands to the people, Ba Yivorchim, and he blesses them. And then in Pasuk Chaf Gimel it says, Ba Yavoy Moshe V'Yaroin Eloi Omoyed, Moshe and Aaron come to the Oyo Moyed, Vayetsu, they go out, Vayevarchu Esa'am, and Nochamol, again, they bless the people. Vayera Kvayda Hashem al and the honor of Hashem appeared to the entire nation. Let's just take, make a brief commercial, because I forgot the most important sponsor who orchestrated the whole event, and that's Rav Meir Weiss, who uh, I believe is the very first person in the show that I knew his name, right? And uh, he's been coming to the shear before the shear even started, when maybe there were less people than we have today. So Mayor uh, didn't want me to make a big deal about his sponsorship, and he almost got his wish. But we wish him good health and nachas from his home mishpacha, and the Baruch Hashem should bless him. Adi Askoel Tzedek. Okay, back to the program. So Aaron Akoyin comes, and he raises up his hand the second time to bless the people. And Rabbi Isai, why is Aaron HaKoyin blessing the people a second time? Says Rashi, very simple. The first time Aaron HaKoyin blesses the people, what does he say? He says, Birchas Koyhanim. Yivarecha Hashem Yishmarecha, Yor Hashem Panam Eilach Lichonecha, and so forth. And the second time that Aaron HaKoyin comes to bless Kla Yisrael, what does Aaron say? Says Rashi, he says the Pasuk, Bihinoyam. Hashem Eloikeinu Aleinu. Let the pleasantness of Hashem be upon us, says Rashi. For seven days, Moshe Rabbeinu is putting up the Mishkan, taking down the Mishkan. Putting up the Mishkan, taking down the Mishkan. And the Shechina is not coming down on the Mishkan. And Klai Yisrael, they're embarrassed. They say, what's the whole thing for? We spent all this money, and we spent all this time, and we invested all this energy in building the base Hamikdash, and Hashem isn't there. He's not, he's not coming. So Aaron HaKoyin says, relax, don't worry. And Aaron HaKoyin offered the following tefillah. V'hinoyam Hashem Eloikeinu Aleinu. Let the pleasantness of Hashem be upon us. Whereupon, Klal Yisrael saw the Anon, the cloud, the Shechina, descend on the Mishkan. So what Chazal are telling us is that if you build a structure and you build a building, and you want Hashem to be there, the appropriate tefillah to say is Vihinayam, where you want the pleasantness of the Rebbe to be upon us. And the question we would like to ask is, why when we pray for God to come, do we pray that He should come on Maase Yodenu, our handiwork, the work of our hands? What is so special about the work of our hands? I mean, obviously, whatever we do, we do with our hands. It goes without saying that it's Maase Yodenu. Why is it necessary to focus, to emphasize Maase Yodeinu, the work of our hands, and why repeat it twice? Maase Yodeinu Kodeno Aleinu, or Maase Yodeinu Kodeno What is this all about? We also want to know, you know, the Ashkenazim, we do it very rarely, the Sephardim, they do it every day. Berchas Koyhanim. Could someone please tell me why the Koyhanim stick out their hands? I mean, what do they have in their hands? Their money? What's in their hands? They're giving a bracha with their hands? What's special? Someone tell me, what is it about the hands? 
the hands have Kedusha? Since when do hands have Kedusha? Nothing in Judaism is dependent on the hands. Well, what is special? The fingers, the hands? So someone said the Shechina is in the hands. I mean, where do you get that from? There's something special about the hands? Why don't you stick your feet up in the air? Stick up your elbow? Stand on your head? You could, you know, do a tumble sauce? What is it with the hands? Is there anything else that we do where you stick out hands? I mean, what's that all about? I have a question. Okay. <laughs> Says the Gemara Menachos and Daf Nun Gimel Amar Aleph, going on to Nun Gimel Amar Beis, that the Beis Hamikdash enjoys a very unique phenomenon, and that is everything about the Beis Hamikdash is connected to the concept of Yedid. What does the word Yedid mean? Right? If I say you're my Yedid. Yedid means a friend. Everything about the Beis HaMegash is connected to the word Yedid. Says the Gemara. Right? You may be familiar with this Gemara from Shweki. Okay? The Gemara says like this. Yava Yedid. Let the Yedid come. Ben Yedid, who's the son of the Yedid. V'yivne li Yedid, Yedid, and build the Yedid. Li Yedid, for the Yedid. B'chel shall Yedid, in the share of the Yedid. B'yiskap ruba Yedidim. And atone for the Yedidim, right? Say that ten times fast. Okay? Let the Yedid come, let the friend come, who's the son of the friend, and build the friend for the friend in the land of the friend and atone for the friends. That's a lot of friends. Six, right? Yava Yedid, Ben Yedid, Ve'yivne Yedid, Li Yedid, Bechel Kashe Yedid, What does this mean? Says the Gemara, who's the friend? Shlomo HaMelech. Shlomo HaMelech is called the friend, like the Pasuk says, that one of the names, anybody named Shlomo? Yeah, one of our sponsors is Shlomo, right? You know, so Shlomo has another name in Tanakh. His name is Yedidya, the friend of God. Okay? Right, okay. So Shlomo is called Yedid. He's the son of the Yedid. Who's the son? Who's the father? Avraham. Avraham Avinu is also called a friend. Where? Because one time Avram Avinu was taking a stroll in the Beis HaMikdash. Now we have to see, what's he doing in the Beis HaMikdash? How did he get there? He took a time machine? How did Avram Avinu get into the Beis HaMikdash? And, Avram, and Hashem says, Mali Yedidi Bebeisi. What's my friend doing in my house? So Avram Avinu is called the Yedid. And let him build the Yedid. The Beis HaMikdash is called Yedid. Why do, where do we see the Beis HaMikdash is called Yedid? In Tehillim, it says about the Beis HaMikdash, Ma Yedidois Mishkanoi Secha. For the Yedid, who's our best friend? God is the Yedid. Zakadesh Baruch Hu Dechsev, Ashira Nali Yedidi. In the portion of Yedid, now this Pasuk you should know from Avram Fried, right? Where is the Beis HaMikdash built and whose portion? Binyamin. Binyamin is called what? Levin Yamin Omar Yedid Hashem Yishkan Levetach Allah. Right? So it's in the share of Binyamin to atone for the Yedidim. Who are the Yedidim? Nasati as Yedidos Nafshi Klal Yisrael are called the Yedidim. So let Shlomo the Yedid, who's the son of the Yedid Avraham, build the Yedid, which is the Beis Hamikdash, for Hakadosh Baruch who's the Yedid, in the share of Yedid Binyamin. Four clients are called Yedidim. Now, what in the world is this Gemara talking about? Why are we getting so hooked up on the Yedid, the, the friendship? Enough with the friendship. I mean, everything about the Beis HaMikdash has to be friendship. The friend should come, the son of the friend, build the friendship and the share of the friendship. I mean, it's coming out of our ears already. Why does everything that has to do with the Beis HaMikdash have to be referred to as Yedid? Let's talk a little bit about Avram Avinu. Do we find anywhere that Avram Avinu is called Yedid? Any other time than when he's in the Beis HaMikdash? For example, when the three Malachim come to Avram Avinu on, his, you know, on the third day of his Mila, yeah? Do the Malachim say, hey, Yedid, how you doing? No, Avram Avinu is not called Yedid. Or when Avram Avinu is about to shecht Yitzchak, does Hashem say, hey, Yedid, stop it? No. The only time Avraham was ever called Yedid is so in somehow, supernaturally, Avraham Avinu went into the Beis HaMikdash at the time of the Chorban. So all of a sudden, he's transposed into the Beis HaMikdash. Ah, oh, he has a new name. Yedid. What is that all about? Why is the Beis HaMikdash and everything related and connected to the Beis HaMikdash called Yedid? The second to last Pasuk in Eicha, 
Hashivenu Hashem Eilecha Benashuva. God, return us to you and we will return. Chadesh Yamenu Kekedem. Renew our days like yesteryear. Meaning, bring us back to the good old days. Question, when were the good old days? So we would say, we're, we're asking Hashem to rebuild the Beis HaMikdash and bring things back the way they were when the Beis HaMikdash stood. Kekedem, like yesteryear. Says the, Be- says the Medrash, no. You know what we're asking God? Chadesh Yamenu Kekedem, look at number nine. Ke'odam Arishain, we're saying, God, Bring us back to the good old days in Gan Eden. Because Adam Arishon, where did he live? What was his address? 101 Gan Eden Mikedem. Right? Gan Eden Mikedem. So Gan Eden is called Kedem. So when we ask Hashem Hashem, bring us back to the good old days, the good old days are not referring to when the Mason Mikdash stood, it's referring to when Adam was in the Garden of Eden. What does that got to do with Eicha? Well, we're in the middle of mourning the Beis HaMikdash. We're asking Hashem to rebuild the Beis HaMikdash. Why are we bringing in Adam Arishon? What does Adam Arishon have anything to do with Eicha? Did we say one thing about Adam Arishon and Eicha? We're mourning the Chorbin. We're talking about the women who never had to cook their own children. We're talking about the young babies who were murdered. And then we say, Hashem, let's go back to Gan Eden. What does Gan Eden have to do with anything? Megillah Seicha begins, Eicha... Yashva Vadad. Alas, she sits in solitude. Eicha, a lament, a kina. And we can't help but think that the word Eicha appears in a little bit of a different form in Parshas Bereshis. When other Marishon ate from that fruit, the first fruit, whatever it was, whether it was an esrog, or whether it was a grape, or whether it was a wheat, one thing we know it wasn't, it wasn't an apple. Okay? It had nothing to do with an apple. And Adam Arishon ate from the fruit and God told him, Adam, Ayaka. Right? Where are you? Look at the word Ayaka. The word Ayaka is quite reminiscent of the word Eicha. In fact, it's spelled the same way. Aleph, Yud, Chaf, Hey. So you say, come on, that's a bit of a stretch. You know, you're really pushing it this time, Rabbi. It's a different word. There's Eicha and there's Ayeka. But if you look in the Medrash, the Medrash comments on the Pasuk in Hosea. Look at number 12. Pasuk in Hosea, the Hema Adam, that at the Chorben Beis HaMikdash, we were like Adam, of Rubris, we violated the covenant. Sham Bogduvi, there we were treacherous against God, says the Medrash, an unbelievable thing. It's almost not believable. Says the Medrash, when the base Hamikdash was, was destroyed, we were exactly like Adam Arisha. Adam, why? Says the Medrash, Hashem took Adam Arisha. He put him in paradise. He put him in Gan Eden. He gave him a commandment, don't eat the fruit. He violated the commandment. God chased him out. He sent him out. And Hashem said, Kinnis, says the Medrash. Kinnis? Which one? Art scroll? Which Kinnis says Hashem? Says the Medrash, Hashem said, Eicha. Where did Hashem say Eicha? Ayeka. Says the Medrash, the word Ayeka was a kina, was a lamentation. Ha- Hash- says the Medrash. It's the same thing with Kla Yisrael. He took them, he put them in paradise. Yerushalayim. Beis Hamikdash. He gave them a commandment. Don't violate the 613. They violated the 613. He chased them out. He sent them out. And he said, Eicha Yashva Vadad. In other words, says the Medrash, that Klai Yisra on the times of Chorbim Es Hamikdash was just a replay of a familiar event. And that is, they were just replaying the chait of Adam Arishon. Adam Arishon ate the fruit... Adam Rishon was placed in paradise. Adam Rishon was chased out. Adam, God lamented. God said, Eicha. So too, Klai, so they're placed in Yushalayim. They're given commandments. They violated the commandments. And they're chased out of Yushalayim. And we say, Eicha. And the question is, come on. What? Mashmita, Eitzah. What does one thing have to do with the other? In what way? 
is there even the slightest similarity whatsoever between the sin of Adam Arishain and the sin of the Jewish people in the times of the first base Hamikdash? I mean, in what what similarity is there? So, we begin with the Medrash. The Medrash in Bamid Maraba, Parak Yudbez, Oisvav. The Medrash says like this. Number 15. On the eighth day that Moshe Rabbeinu put up the Mishkan, the Pasuk says, Vayihi biyayim kalois Moshe lahakim asa Mishkan. And it was on the day that Moshe finished putting up the Mishkan. Says the Medrash. What does the word Vayihi mean? You know what Vayihi means? Vayihi means something that was, it, le- it left us, and we restored it, we got it back. Whenever you see the word Vayihi, Vayihi means something that we used to have, we lost it, and we got it back. Says the Medrash, God created the world, but He had nowhere to go. Where was Hashem in the beginning of creation? God was hovering. He was hovering, right? Hashem was looking for a place to land. Not until Adam Arishain was created, God could not find a place to rest until Adam Arishain. Adam Arishain comes to the sin. Hashem's together with Adam and Gan Eden in the Garden of Eden. Like the Pasuk says, Hashem himself was actually in Gan Eden with Adam. And as soon as Adam ate from the tree, Hashem said, Adam, adios amigo, have a nice one, I'll see you later, I'm out of here, go fly a kite, go jump in a lake, all those expressions. However, so where's Hashem? He left. He went back into Shemayim. Did Hashem ever come back? Yes. On the eighth day, that Moshe Rabbeinu completed the Mishkan, Vayehi, Biyayim Kalois Moshe Lahakim Esa Mishkan, Hashem came back. Why does it say Vayehi? Something we had, we had the Shechina, God's divine presence among us, when Adam was in Gan Eden. We lost it when he sinned, and when the Mishkan was completed, Hashem came back. So now we're starting to see that the Mishkan and the Beis Hamikdash was merely trying to capture that which Adam Arishan had in Gan Eden. And when Adam Arishan sinned and God left, what did Hashem say? Eicha, ayaka. And when Klal Yisrael sinned and God destroyed the Beis Hamikdash and He left, what did Hashem say? Eicha. Because the repercussions of the sin of Adam Arishan we're exactly parallel to the repercussions of the sins that destroyed the base of Mikdash. Adam Arishan had Shechina. He sinned. He lost the Shechina. We built the base of Mikdash. The Shechina came back. We sinned. The Shechina left. Okay. Very nice. Beautiful. That's it. That's what I came here tonight to hear. So what we want to try to explore is, is there any similarity between the sin of Adam Arishan and the sins of the Jewish people in the times of the first base Hamikdash and second base. So let's get straight. What did Adam Arishan do wrong? Very simple. God said, "You want oranges, eat oranges. You want apples, eat apples. You want grapes, eat grapes. Tangerines, pears. Those are the only fruits I know, Mongo. right? But don't eat the eight hadas. Don't eat the eight hadas. And Adam ate it. And in the times of the first base Hamikdash, what sin did we do? We ate a fruit. That was the avera. No." The Gemara says in Masech the Yuma Daf Tesamah Beis Mikdash Rishon number sixteen Mivnei Macharav. Why was the first base of Mikdash destroyed? Avoid the Zara idol worship, Giloy Arayos illicit relations, Ushvich Hasdamim murder. What does that have to do with what Adam Rishon did? Adam Rishon ate a fruit. He ate an esrog, and we killed people, and we we murdered. We served idols. We committed arayos. I mean, what's the comparison between the sin of the Jewish people and the sin of Adam Rishon? And in the second base, Hamikdash, what was the avera? Sin aschinam. Adam Rishon didn't even have anyone to hate. Adam Rishon didn't violate sin aschinam. Don't say that. Says the Vilna Gaon an amazing thing. Says the Gra. This Gra is brought down in a mamar of Rabbi David Cohen, the Rosh Shiva of Hebron, which is quoted in the Sefer Ayah Moshe, page Shin Sadihei. Adam Arishain, you think he just ate from a fruit? No. He served idols. 
he committed a gilei arayos and he murdered. So we have to try to see, when did he do that? It doesn't say that in my stone chumash. But that's what the Vilna Gaon says. The Vilna Gaon says, Adam Arishon violated the big three. And he had to pay the price. He had to rectify it. So he came back three times. Avraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov. Says the Vilna Gaon. Each one of the others rectified another sin of Adam Arishon. Adam Arishon sinned with idolatry. Avram Avinu paid the price. He was thrown into a fire. Right? What do you do with somebody who serves idols? Sreifa. What do you do with idols? Ba'esh tisrefun oisai. Says the Gra, Avram Avinu was thrown into the fire to pay the price for the sin of Adam Arishon, of Avedazar. Says the Vilna Gaon, Yitzchak. Ah. Yitzchak is rectifying the sin of Adam Arishon with Gilei Arayos, with illicit relation. Now we have to see what did Adam Arishon do wrong. But says the Vilna Gaon, listen to this. This is important to hear. Where does Gilei Arayos start? Says Rashi. You see it? You want it? You do it. Looking at Arayos. For a person to gaze at a woman for purposes of gaining pleasure, if you're not married to them, is an Aver. It's a lav in the Torah. One is not permitted. So it's a Pasuk and Chumash. People are not aware. That one is not permitted to gaze for, for purposes of pleasure seeking. So the Arayos, illicit relations, begins with the eyes. The person has to be careful what they look at. Right? So Adam Arishon sinned with Arayos. Yitzchak had to pay the price. Yitzchak was blind. Says the Vilna Gain. Adam Arishon murdered. We'll see how. Who paid the price? Yaakov Avinu. How did he pay the price? Well, when you kill, you have to go into Golos. You have to go into exile. Yaakov Avinu ran into exile for, uh, for 14 years. He's a Yeshiva Shem Ever by Laban. So Yaakov Avinu rectified the sin of Adam Arishon for murder. Avram Avinu rectified the sin of idolatry. Yitzchak rectified the sin of Arayos. Yaakov Avinu rectified the sin of murder. Okay. Says the Shlach HaKadosh, where do we find anywhere that Adam Arishon, that Adam served idols? Where do we find that he committed illicit relations? Where do we find that he committed murder? Says the Shlach HaKadosh, very simple. The Gemara in Sanhedrin says, Adam Arishon, in order for him to eat from the first tree, he became an Apikairas. The Gemara says, Adam Arishon Minhaya. He was an Apikairas. He was a heretic. He had thoughts of Avodah Zarah. That's how he served Avodah Zarah. How about Arayos? Listen to this one. Okay? <coughs> the Nachash didn't just come to Chava and say, Chava, try the fruit. Says the Gemara Masech the Shabbos, Ba Nachash al Chava v'hita ba Zuama. The Nachash actually had relations with Chava. The Nachash injected Chava with poison. The Nachash had Gilei Arayos with Chava. Ishtay Kagufay, Gilei Arayos. Says the Shlach Kadosh. And what about murder? Ah, oh, murder. Who was Adam's son? Cain. Cain was a murderer. The apple doesn't fall far, far from the tree. Says the Shla, Adam Arishon was guilty of the big three. Gili Arayos, the snake with Chava. Shvichas Domim, Kayan. Avoidazara, Adam Minhaya. Says the Chafetz Chaim, let me take that a little further. If anybody ever learned Sefer Chafetz Chaim, if you got past the first page, you will have read this. The Chafetz Chaim writes on the very first page, Adam Arishon violated the big three. He doesn't quote the Shla. He says it on his own. He says the Chafetz Chaim. Number one, look at number 20. Hashem told him, don't eat from the tree. So if you don't listen to Hashem, when Hashem talks to you directly, that means you don't believe in Him. That's Abed Zarah. The Nachash lived with Chava. That's Arayos. And murder. 
Adam Arishan was the biggest murderer in history. Who did he kill? Every single person who was ever born. Because before Adam Arishan was created, the plan was people would live forever. Adam Arishan sinned, it brought Misa Lailam. Adam Arishan is responsible, says the Chafetz for being a right Sayach. And therefore, says the Chafetz Chaim, therefore it is our job to rectify all three sins of Adam Arishan. So in the times of the first base Hamikdash, when we repeated these three sins, we were in effect reliving the sin of Adam Arishan. So you'll say, Rabbi Sai, but what about the second base Hamikdash? Second base Hamikdash was destroyed because of. Where did Adam Arishon do that? So Chavetz Chaim says on the next page. When the Gemara says the second base of English was destroyed because of Sin Aschinam, it doesn't just mean baseless hatred. It is actually referring to Lashon Hara. And guess who spoke Lashon Hara? The Nachash. Guess who he spoke Lashon Hara to? Chava. What was the Lashon Hara? The Nachash said, Chava. You want to be like God? Eat the fruit. How do you think God created the world? He ate this fruit. And he, and he created the world. Everything Hashem knows is from the fruit. So the sin of other nations was intertwined with Lashon Hara. Says the Chafetz Chaim, by speaking Lashon Hara, you are actually reliving the sins of other Marishon. Tell you another twist on this. The Maral. The Maral says the exact same thing. That Adam Harishon sinned with the big three. And the job of the Avais was to rectify the three sins of Adam Arishain. Says the Maral, Avram Avinu. Now he says it a little bit differently than the Gra. Adam Arishon sinned with Arayos. So Avram Avinu was so careful in Arayos. Where do we find he was careful? The Gemara and Baba Basra says like this. The Gemara and Baba Basra says, listen to this, that Eov is nothing compared to Avram Avinu. Because Eov said, Uma es boinon al habesula. Eov said, I will not contemplate the image of a woman. That implies, if he's not married to her, he's not going to look at her. But he would look at his own wife. And Avram Avinu was so holy, he didn't even look at Sarah. Right? In other words, Avram Avinu did not watch television. Right? Eov also did not watch television. Aiyah went so far, Eov said he did not look at a basula. And Avram Avinu went even further. So Avram Avinu rectified the sin of Adam Arishain because he guarded his eyes. How about Yitzchak? Yitzchak rectified Avodah Zarah. Yitzchak said, I'm going to be thrown onto a fire for the sake of God. He rectifies Avodah Zarah. And Yaakov Avinu, Yaakov Avinu rectifies Shvichas Damim, murder. How? Because who's his twin brother? Esav. Esav's specialty is bloodshed. So Yaakov is the antithesis of Esav. Yaakov rectifies Ritzicha. But in any event, what the Maral is telling us, what the Vilna Gun is telling us, what the Chafetz Chaim is telling us, is that Adam Arishon sins with the big three. We always learned in, in second grade, in first grade, in kindergarten, Adam Arishon just ate a fruit. Nah, he didn't just eat a fruit. He did a lot more than eating the fruit. He did the big three. Avodah Zara, Gilei Arayos, Shvichas Damim. Okay, very nice. That's what I came here tonight to hear. We have a very odd Pasuk, if we may say so, in Parshas Bereshis. Very strange Pasuk. Vayoyimah Hashem Aleikim. Hashem said, this is after Adam ate from the fruit. Hashem says, Oyvei, Hein ha'adam ha'ya ka'achad mimenu. Behold, Adam Arishon, he's going to be like one of us. Ladas toy vara. V'yata now. Pen yishlach yadoy. He may send forth his hand. Be'lokach gam e'etz ha'chaim. And he's from the tree of life. Okay, let's get the story straight. There are two fruits in Gan Eden. There's the Eitz Hadas and the Eitz Hachayim. Adam Arishon was allowed to eat from the Eitz Hachayim. He wasn't allowed to eat from the Eitz Hadas. Adam Arishon eats from the Eitz Hadas. And all of a sudden Hashem says, Oy vey! Now that Adam ate from the Eitz Hadas, the tree of knowledge, I'm afraid that now he's going to eat from the Eitz Hachayim. He'll live forever. We've got to do something about it. Why is Hashem only afraid now that he's going to eat from the Eitz Hachayim? Before he ate from the Eitz Hadas, Hashem wasn't afraid. Why wasn't he afraid? And why does the Pasuk say 
Maybe he's going to stick out his hand. How else is he going to get the fruit? He's going to stick out his toes? I mean, why does the Pasuk have to say, Oh no, Adam's going to have to stick out his hands and take from the Yetzirah Chaim. Of course he's going to stick out his hands. Another very interesting Gemara. We have a principle that Hashem protects Sadiqim. That Sadiqim are not going to just sin. Hashem will guard them. Hashem will protect them from sin. And the Pasuk said, the Chazal tells in Chulan, Ein HaKadosh Baruch Hu Mevi Takala Ayedet Sadiqim. God will not cause Sadiqim to stumble. But the words the Gemara use is God will not bring stumbling to the hands of Tzadikim. Why is the Gemara focusing on the hands of the Tzadikim? What they could stumble with their nose, with their eyes, with their ears, but not with their hands? Why is the Gemara focusing on their hands? And then we have a Pasuk in Shmuel. It's talking about Shaul HaMelech, he was in a bad mood. But don't worry, David Menagin Biyad, David played the harp with his hand. What else did he play it with? He played it with his knees, his elbows? Of course he played it with his hand. Just say, the David Hayyim Menagin. And then in Tehillim, we have a Pasuk. The Pasuk says like this David Amel says, Hashem Yigmeleni Hashem Kitsirki. God, reward me according to my righteousness. Kevar Yada Yashivli. Reward me according to the purity of my hands. What is it about the hands? The Kaihanim blessed with their hands. David played with his hand. Yaakov, Hashem was afraid that other Rishon would take the Yitzhah with his hand. What is it about the hands? Rabbi Sai, fasten your seatbelts. Try not to hit the ceiling. Comes the Ben Ishchai. In the Sefer Adaras Elio. And the Ben Ishchai says like this. Look, I know the whole shir already. I know other Marishon sinned with the big three. Avodah Zara, Gil Arayish, Vichasamim. He chases out God from Gan Eden. God, Hashem says, Ayaka, Eicha. And then Klal Yisrael builds a base Hamikdash. Hashem comes back. We sin with the big three. God leaves. And Hashem says, Eicha. Listen to the following. Says the Sefer Adar Selio, in the name of the Sefer Vayalakit Yosef, in the name of the Sefer Tiferes Hagershuni, in the name of Rav Menachem Azaria, Menachem Azaria was... Rav Azaria Mipano, the Ramah Mipano, one of the great Italian Mikubalim, he also wrote Shasta Shus, um, Ramah Mipano. By the way, the Ramah Mipano, we, ha- we owe him a great debt of gratitude. Because Ramah Mipano bought the folios of the Ramak, off the widow of the Ramak, and he published the Timer Devara and the Paradise Remainim. And then the Beis Yosef gave him his folios to publish Beis Yosef. Says the Ramami Pana. Adam Arishon comes to the big tree. He takes a look at the tree. Looks good. He listens to the snake. He sullies his ears. He sullies his eyes. He feels the tree. T- touch it, feels good. It smells good. But the one thing he couldn't do is he couldn't touch it. His brain sent a message. Arms, reach out. The arm said, I ain't going anywhere. He said to his hands, hands, take it. Hands couldn't take it. He said, fingers, grab it. Didn't move. The arms, hands, fingers of other Rishon were paralyzed. They did not want to violate the command of Hashem. And therefore, what did other Rishon do? He just ate it, put it in his mouth. But his hands were not involved in the sin. Every other limb of his body was involved in that first primordial sin. But not his hands. His hands were not involved. Says the Ben Ishchai, there's a principle that God would never allow... Why did Adam's hands not... Why were they not involved in the sin? Because Adam Arishan started off as a tzaddik. And in HaKadosh Baruch Hu Mavia Takala Al Yedei Tzadikim God will never allow the hands of Tzadikim to do an Avera. So of course his hands couldn't do an Avera. At that point he was righteous. He was one of the greatest person ever created. He's Yitzir Kap of Shal HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He's the handiwork of God. A Tzadik can't sin with his hands. So his hands wouldn't sin. But now that other Rishon sinned, 
And he's not a tzaddik anymore. He's a min now. Now he's an apikoros. Now he's a, right? Chazal says he's a bomb. So now he's not a tzaddik. Right? We can't really say that, those words. We're just translating the words of the Gemara. He's a min. Obviously that means on a level that we may not relate to. But now that he's not a tzaddik, now his hands can do an avera. So that's why the Pasuk says, Viata pen yishlach yadai. Now I'm afraid his hands are going to take it. Says the Ben Ishchai. When the Kaihanim come to bless Klal Yisrael, what is the purest part of the human body? What part of the body, what part of the human body remains pristine and was not sullied by the sin of Adam Arishain? Only the hands. That is why when the Kohanim come to bless Klal Yisrael, the only part of the body that they could really use are their Yadayim. Yad, Yad, the two hands. That is why the sin of Adam Arishain was what? He sullied his whole body except for his hands. Who's Adam reincarnate? Who's the Gilgal of Adam? David HaMelech. David HaMelech is Masakin the Chet. David HaMelech is Menagin Biyad. David HaMelech's hands are there in their pristine form. That is why David says to God, David says, you know, Hashem, I'm Adam. Adam was supposed to live for a thousand years. And then what happened? He saw into the future, there's going to be a man by the name of David HaMelech who's going to die at birth. So Adam gave David 70 years, but he didn't give it to David, he gave it to himself. He's the Gilgal, David's the Gilgal. In fact, Adam stands for Adam, David, Mashiach. So David HaMelech, who's the Gilgal of Adam, Hayom Menagin Biyad, says the Ben Ishchai in Parshas Bereshis. But when Adam Arishan comes, to eat from the Eitz Hadas. The eyes are there. The ears are there. The mouth is there. Everything is participating. Except for Yad, Yad, the two Yadayim. The Mishnah tells us in Pirkei Avos that if you went to the Beis HaMikdash, you would see unbelievable things. Ten miracles happened every day in the Beis HaMikdash. What were they? A woman would never miscarry from the smell of meat. Sometimes a pregnant woman, she smells meat, she says, I want it, you better give it to her. It could be dangerous. If a woman needs to smell something, especially a pregnant woman, you have to make sure you give it to her. And the meat in the base of meat never rotted. Never rot. Right? The base of meat never rot. Why didn't it rot? It was a miracle. You leave meat out for an hour, you come back, it's rancid. No, the meat in the base of meat never rot. There were no flies in the base of Bachayim. Now, if you want to know what the Beis Hamid B'chaim is, so come tomorrow morning to Rabbi Obe Amshul at 9.30. We're going to be learning Masech Tamidus. We're learning actually about where the Beis Hamid B'chaim is in the Beis HaMikdash. There were no flies. Not only that, the Kayin Gadol never, never experienced a emission the night of Yom Kippur. Says the Chassid Yaivitz, wait a second, all these miracles have one thing in common. The meat didn't rot, the women didn't miscarry, there were no flies. Wow, it sounds like paradise. It sounds like there's no death in the Beis HaMikdash. There's no decomposition in the Beis HaMikdash. There's no rotting in the Beis HaMikdash. There's no Misa. It's like life was before the sin. Says the Chassid Yavitz, that's exactly it. Adam Arishon sinned. He brought death to the world. He brought decomposition to the world. He brought rotting to the world. He brought, fl- brought flies to the world. In this world, because of the sin of Adam, t- tomorrow you're going to be one day older, more decomposed, more degenerate than you were yesterday. Right? That's the way, that's, that's what Adam Arishon caused. There is one small space in the world where we were able to preserve life before the sin of Adam Arishon. In other words, you ever see, you know, people come, oh, you want this bottle? What's in there? Air. Where'd you get the air from? It's air from Israel. Like, yeah, right, right? It's air from Israel. So people spend money, they buy air from Israel. So they bottle the pure air from Israel and they put it in a bottle. So to speak, you know what the Beis HaMikdash is? The way life was before Adam Rishon sinned, they bottled it up, they put it in the Beis HaMikdash, and they preserved it. So now we're starting to see. 
Adam Arishon sinned, he thrust the world into Misa, into death, into decomposition. God yells out, Ayecha, Ayeka. The Beis Hamikdash was able to preserve a small space in the world where life was the way life was before the sin. And we destroyed it, and we scream out, Eicha! So Rabbi Isai, if you had to describe the one spot in the world where it was unaffected, unsullied, unsoiled by the sin of Adam Arishon, how would you describe that spot? I would describe it, Yad, Yad. That is why the Beis HaMikdash is called Yedid. The word Yedid is composed of Yad, Yad, the two hands. Because it's the one spot in this world that we're able to preserve life the way things were before the sin of Adam Arishon. These are the two Yadayim. That is why the Beis HaMikdash was built by Yedid, Yad, Yad. The son of Yedid, Yad, Yad. In the Chelek of Yedid, Yad, Yad. To atone for Yedidim, that is why the adjective used in numerous places to describe the Beis Amigdash was Yedid. Yedid, by the way, the Vilna Gain says something similar. But the, what we're advancing tonight is a novel idea I don't believe was said before. The word Yedid is composed of the two Yodayim, based on the Ben Chai, that the two Yodayim were not involved in the cinema of Arishon. And based on the Chassid Yaivetz, that the, uh, that the Beis Hamikdash was the one spot on earth untarnished by the sin of Adam Arishon, the proper name, the greatest adjective to give for the Beis Hamikdash is Yedid Hashem. It's the two hands. It's the place on this world that is unsullied by the sin of Adam Arishon. That is why the Kaihanim, when they bless the people, they use the two hands. And that is why Rabbi Isai, when Aaron HaKoyim comes to the Mishkan, and he sees the Mishkan is missing something. It's missing the most important ingredient. What is that ingredient? The Shechina. The Shechina. You know, you can have a big building. You can have a, a beautiful building. But if Hashem is not there, it's empty. It's meaningless. And Aaron HaKoyim says, if we have to, you know, it's very interesting. I heard recently that, you know, uh, Rebel Yashiv, Sechatzak Levracha, somebody used to stand Shmon Esrei next to Rebel Yashiv. And uh, Rebel Yashiv was not Marech in his Shmon Esrei. He didn't dive in a long Shmon Esrei. He said the words at a pace, like you talk to your friend. The person was sitting next to Rebel Yashiv. And Rebel Yashiv stopped for three words during the Shmon Esrei to focus on those three words. And now without these three words, it's like we have nothing. Hamachazir, Shrinasai, Litsiyain. That we could have an Eretz Yisrael and we could have access to Makar Mesakadoshim and the Yushalayim could be built up. But if the Shrina is not in Yushalayim, Imani Khan, Hakol Khan. Hillel said if the Shrina is in the base of Mikdash, everything is there. Vimeinani Khan, but if the Shrina is not there, you have nothing. That's, those are the three words that Rabbi Yashiv emphasized. Hamachazir Shechinasei Lutziyayin. So Aaron HaKoyin comes to the Mishkan. And he realizes what the Mishkan is, is it's the microcosm of the way the world was before Adam Arishan. The best fila he could say is, Hashem, we want to create a place of the two Yadais, we're suggesting. V'hinoyam Hashem Aleikeinu Aleinu Umase Yadeinu Kainu Aleinu Yad number one, Umase Yadeinu Kaineneu, and that is why we end off Echa. Hashivenu, Hashem, Eilecha, Venashuva, Chadesh, Yamenu, Kekedem. We want to go back to the way life was before the sin, Beganeden, Mikeden, which in fact was the way life was in the Beis Hamikdash. Yiratzain, Sheibane, Bimher, Yamenu, Amen. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.